Today on The People, I will show you how people live in the tribes where they believe in such thing as cursed children. If an infant's top teeth come in before the bottom teeth, that's considered to be a deformity that calls for the village to literally kill the child. You will meet this amazing person, Lale Labuko. He's Ethiopia's top humanitarian, who's fighting to save the lives of these poor cursed infants for years. They have to be taken from the tribes by force at a risk to one's own life. When I come to that village with a motorbike, uh, it was, the child was left out of the village and given to dogs. Guys, sorry for interrupting. I want to share something personal with you. There's been already eight months, I think, as YouTube has disabled monetization for Russian YouTubers that we got from the Russian viewers. And since then, we're making the video with our own money, so trying to get new budgets. And if you like what I do, if you like our videos, I would really appreciate it if you support us on Patreon, on PayPal, or on Pioneer. All the links are in the description. I would really appreciate this and try to make even more great films for you. Thank you guys, now let's get back to video. So we are now in the middle of African savanna and now we are heading to a very remote village. There is a tribe called Hammer and the thing is that the scariest thing about this place is that they still use uh, the ceremony of Mingi. What, mean, what means Mingi? It means that if there is a child in this village born and the teeth go first from the top, not from the bottom, by elderly, by their king, he is supposed to be rejected from the village, which means that they will bring him to forest and leave it there to let animals eat him and they still do it even nowadays. This is Lale Lubuko. He was born in a village like the one he's about to take us to. Uh, so it's a very small village but very powerful. Really? So, yeah, very powerful decision maker. So, uh, in that village is very strategic for tribal culture uh, blessing. Uh, it's in the center of the hammer uh, where they make decisions because some of the village are known by tourists, but this one is a very hidden place uh -huh. where they discuss about their ceremonial issues, cultural issues. Mingi practices. Mingi practices are basically infanticide when they get rid of cursed infants. There are three types of curses. The first is when a baby's top teeth come in before the bottom teeth. The second type refers to an illegitimate child not being sired by a husband. The third type is for babies sired by a husband who wasn't approved of by the elders. In all three cases, the village decides to kill the infant. And if the mother tries to escape, she'll be killed too. Lale still remembers the first time he went to save a cursed baby. Porto in the, others, in the other village. So they sent the messenger to tell me uh, to come and rescue the child. But when I come to that village with motorbike, uh, it was, the child was left out of the village and given to dogs. So the dogs trying to eat the child, but I just arrived on time. It was very scary time, it's very scary. And the dogs, I have to, you know, scare the dogs to run away and take the baby. When I take the baby, some of the elders were angry and they shoot on me. And then I have to run away to the car, to the, mo the motorbike and drive to the other village. Lale has been on a mission to save children from such villages for over 15 years. He's built his own team that has an office now 
and saving Mingi children is their full-time job. If you wish to make a donation, please use the banking details we've provided. Walking in the village, I see for the first time, they grab the mother, the child from the mother, and the mother was crying. But the elder's hand was very strong. So they separated from the child from the mother, ran away to the river. I followed them, they called Mingi, Mingi, the child, the mother was crying, the child was separated. They grabbed and they so, called. So there were so many, uh, how, do you remember? Uh, six, like, maybe, I, I recall it, five, six elders. They come and grab from the mother. And the mother, was, the mother was crying, but they called Mingi, Mingi should be killed. And they ran to the river, toward the river. I was there standing, watching. They drowned the child in the river, and the child was killed. You saw it? Really? I saw it in my eyes. After that, I come back and ask my mother, why they do this? And my mother started explaining me about Mingi. She said, Lale, in your culture, people kill their children. Uh, when the teeth come on the top before the bottom teeth, they consider those children are cursed and bring disease, sickness, so they have to kill the child. Lale was lucky to have his bottom teeth come in first, unlike two of his sisters. My mother said, Lale, you have two older sisters. That's the first time I heard about my two older sisters. Yeah, they were killed by Mingi. Sorry. Yeah. <clears throat> the baby girls didn't even get proper names. Lale thinks of his life as before and after he found out. He started creating a network of volunteers who would inform him promptly of new Mungi cases. He supplies them with motorbikes and cell phones in order to make sure that they can stay connected. And yet sometime they're too late. Yeah, this photo we got from the village. Someone took the picture of the baby who was a, a Mingi child, was killed by the father. The father killed himself. The father killed himself? Yeah. He, he, the father killed his own child, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do you know any more? I mean, like, was, how did he do it? Yeah, yeah, he took it from the mother. He, uh, uh, first he just, yeah, first he beat the mother, so the mother ran away, and then he took the baby, and he threw on the sun because it's very sunny and he put on the ground, so that's why it's like fire. So the fire, the sun killed the baby and they cut one of the leg, all the hands, you know, so, and then the baby died. Yeah. And who sent you this photo? Uh, one of the, my friend from oh. the village, yeah, the after they the killed, case. yes. I'll be honest, YouTube will ban our film if we leave this image unblurred. Lale says such killings occur almost every week. This horrifying ritual is practiced by three tribes in Ethiopia, the Kara, the Bana, and the Hama. Even this year alone, more than 300 children have been killed. This year. This year? Yeah, this year. In three months, 47 children have been killed. Oh my According to my report from my local facilitators. Saving these kids is an extremely hard job. The tribes believed if a cursed child lives, the tribe will be punished by the gods who will send drought. Is it possible to come to, the, to some village and tell them, like, we give you $50,000, you as the baby? Can it work this way? No. No? It's not possible. This is not the thing you're going to change with money. This is the only way you can change is giving awareness, uh, just educating young people. It's, it has been there for a long, long time, exists for many years. Mm -hmm. And this culture is attachment for people's life. So it's a very serious issue. It's connected with their life. If you uh, trying to buy with money, of course, they will take your money, but they will not change. 
ah. that's not the way we're going to change. Ah, so you mean that yeah. you can save one child, but you don't change their their mind. mind yeah? Yes. Ah, I understand. Yes. Which I is understand. much more important. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, maybe if, even if you bring your fifty thousand uh, dollars, for them is not not the money. It doesn't matter because they think about their lives and their livestock. Yeah. Their money, livestock are very important than uh, your the money. Because if they keep Mingi child there in the village, the curse will come and kill more than anyone. We're almost there. I can see the straw roofs of the houses in the village. The key obstacle is the very fact that this village is not a tourist site. The people there in general don't trust any strangers. I'm not even sure if they will let me into the village. One of Lale's volunteer informants in a blue t-shirt meets us as we get closer. We follow him. Lale paid for the bike he's riding on out of his own pocket. Lale warns me, even if you do get to see the elders, they will lie to your face. If we ask them, they say, we will not, we stop. They, they lie, they don't tell the truth. Everyone changed their, their approach. Of yes, they say, no Mingi, but they kill me. They say, no child is killing, killed, no child is, no Mingi practice, but still they practice. Hiddenly secretive. The mother, she cannot speak, yes? She the the women have no rights here in this community. At all? At all. Even, not not even, only in, in case of Mingi, in general? In general. The women are oppressed, the women have no rights. Outside the village, one of the locals gives us instructions where to park the car. First, we have to wait outside. Lale engages in a lengthy negotiation. It helps that he is from this area himself. People know him. And so I finally get the green light to enter. Although villagers do look at me with distrust. I see a lot of guns around. Here is a herdsman with an AK assault rifle. Was there any shooting? Can he maybe remember how it happened? Like, can he say it? I said, I mean, like, how someone attacked him or like, can he describe the day? I know. This is the animal he can tell the truth, so he's hiding. He did, hiding the gun? No, or? hiding what he killed. He said, I didn't kill anything. As I look around the village, I understand that Lale was right. In one corner, there's a bunch of men. They're sitting on pelts and low stools quite comfortably, chatting. Women are on the other corner. No pelts, no stools, nothing. Look at this woman's foot. It is terribly deformed, and she most certainly cannot walk well. And yet she gets no comfortable seating or anything. She's just sitting on the ground, nursing a baby. Before, we were scared to talk about the Mingi problem. But thanks to Lale, we are much better informed now. And we have to come to understand that killing infants is bad. We have accepted the Mingi in our village, and we are protecting them now. Many children are safe now. We saved their lives. What Lale said about the elders seems to be absolutely true too. After the government ordered to stop the killings, it has become all quiet. Twenty years is quiet. For six years. Six years ago, we started protecting children after we put an end to all Mingi practices in the Kara tribe. But uh, honestly speaking, that's not true. To find out the truth, we sit there nodding and smiling to the elders for a while, and then tell them it's too hot and ask for a break somewhere under a roof. They let us inside, and we see two women brewing coffee. Women, as mothers, must know the truth. Can we ask her what is her name? My name is Zilla. Uh, long she lives here. So she. This is her house, yeah? It's a new house built just a year ago. It's very calm and relaxed inside. There is a big pot on the fire. The woman of the house keeps blowing it up. It's cool in there. The air circulates through the walls made of big sticks. We know that no one is going to disturb us here for at least half an hour. Uh, so, and she's married? Yes, I'm married. When my father decided to marry me off, I had to love my husband. 
Father makes decisions for me, so I had to love him. If my father loves my husband, so do I. I was nine at the time. She was nine when she had nine a... Nine or ten, yeah. Very young, small. When Lale mentioned forced marriages, that's what he meant. A nine-year-old girl was sold to a man who paid the bridal price. Do you know how many cows did she have? A hundred. When I asked her if she knows anything about the Minge, she started making gestures like, no, she knows nothing of the kind. But then she looked around, and after she made sure that no one was listening, she said, I killed my son. When people told me I had to kill him, I killed him. How many months did he was? About nine or ten months old. It was a tooth issue or what? Yes, it was his teeth. The top ones came in first. Ah, is it possible not to show anyone? People stop by to drink some coffee, they see the child smiling. He can't yeah. hide it. So some of the neighbors who stopped by for coffee told the elders. Zile knew what was coming and tried to escape. Where did she hide? Can she describe? There is a cliff over there. I hid between the rocks from them. They came, many elders, and they took my baby from me. So they found her in that cliff? Yes, they found me there. And then it turned into a horror story. Lale explains that different tribes have different ways of getting rid of the cursed children. Most of the time, the elders try to avoid even touching the child in order not to be associated with the killing. I am sorry I killed my son. Are you subscribed to our channel? Not yet? The sad thing is that Anton can't go on his next adventure until you do. So pretty please, subscribe now. That's right. Go ahead, click subscribe. Well done and thank you. We can continue now. For kids who were born as unlucky as her nine-month-old, there is now a shelter today, built by Lale, who has been trying for many, many years not only to save these so-called cursed children, but also to give them a home and an education. Uh, this is uh, uh, Alma, this Mingi, so we rescued him from one of the village when the family abandoned him. And this is Terefe, the second one here. Terefe was uh, from Benna tribe, one of the tribe at Sakulujoch. Uh, so from Benna tribe, uh, and Terefe was left uh, in the bush uh, with her mother, not to feed because because of the government involvement, because of Omu child, the people they afraid to kill him, but they just let him to starve to death. So, and he was starving. And so when we rescued him, he was very skinny. And we have to took him to Addis Ababa to do medic medical treatment, just because of malnutrition, yeah. So, yeah. Not that skinny already? Yeah, not skinny anymore. Terefe he's seventh grade now. Seventh grade? Yes, seventh grade. He's almost 14 now. The reason this quiet little girl is here had nothing to do with her teeth. Her mother was announced to be Menge before she was even born. The, that's uh, Liu. She has a story there. Oh. I will give you the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Masrana, they are twins, and oh. the mother left uh, them uh, in the hospital, and the one died, and we rescued one. Uh huh. Yeah. It's they a very sad story. Left in the hospital, you mean like? So one of the government driver uh, rescued her when she gives the birth of twins. And then they took him to the hospital. After two weeks, the one died because of uh, uh, food. There's no milk. And then they called me uh, because there is another, uh, uh, the, some uh, visitors from Israel. They visited the hospital and they called me. They said, Lale, there's a child, he's, her sister died, she's almost died. She was very skinny when she came. Lale has a horror story to tell about every one of these kids. The most horrible thing, however, is that infanticide 
continues. Beliefs of the past are very strong in the minds of people, untouched by modern education. Uh, since uh, we started this project, it's almost 14 years now. In 14 years, I think more than 1,000 kids killed. More than 1,000 children have been killed. But from that, we rescued 50 children. That means 0.0001%, very small percent. But all our rescues are miracles. It's a miracle. For me, it's, it's just something amazing. Just one life is greater than all the world it wells. That's the way I think always. For me, saving 50 kids, I am richer than anyone in the world. That's the way I believe. The children in Lale's care are very lucky. They were rejected by their own families, but here they have everything they need for a happy life. A cozy home, clothing, and most importantly, clean water and quality food, since both are scarce in Ethiopia. It's 6 p.m., time for supper. This is the food counter. They have a big pot here. Today they have ground beef pasta. It's basically out already because, because everyone is eating already. And here they are sitting at the tables. These little guys and girls. Everyone has a metal plate and a cup. And here they are digging it. After supper, kids have to clean their teeth. They go to the teacher, pick up their individual brushes. Truth be told, not everyone in their native tribes have even heard of such a thing as a toothbrush. These are the dorm rooms where kids sleep and basically live. They're pretty big. There's a lot of space. Each has four or five beds. The beds are made of concrete. They're very sturdy. It's a huge difference compared to what they were or would be sleeping on at home in their tribal villages. There people sleep on... Sometimes just rags on the ground. Here they sleep on thick mattresses. Two kids per bed because they're so big. And they have mosquito net canopies over the beds. Sometimes even two layers, because mosquitoes and insects are one of Ethiopia's biggest problems. They transmit malaria, and there are also dangerous biting flies. These girls are getting ready to sleep, top and tail. My guess is that all kids in Africa, in rural Africa, can only dream of living in such a wonderful home. The level of comfort in the village where Lale took us the other day, or anywhere in the tribes, is nowhere near as advanced. This is how people live in this village. That's one of the houses. It's a circle made of thick sticks. Sticks and straw thrown over to make a roof. And that's how it looks inside. A tent made of sticks. And that's what it is. We've made something like this as kids. Here's the fire. There are stones they used as an oven. And that's where they sleep, on this piece of roofing sheet. That's all they've got. That's what it looks like. This is the home of Zile, the mother of Bono. I am sorry I killed my son, because now I see that Mingi children can be safe. I regret killing They can be protected. I am so sorry. They are protected. I regret I cried a lot. I lost my son. I was very stupid. Suddenly, a younger woman joins our conversation. She is Zile's daughter. She was listening to our conversation, and now it seems like she wants to share something. Bono, my name is Bono Salamo. She is married, yeah? Yeah, can be. I was taken to another place to be married there. It was a forced marriage. I didn't have the chance to choose a husband because I was too young. I will run to a town nearby. She is 29 now and she has seven children. She's been lucky to have all seven have their bottom teeth come in first, but she's still worried about the future. If she has more children and any of them turns out to be Minge, she doesn't know if she'll be able to save them. I'll hide or join Omo child. Yeah, does it mean that uh, if Omo child doesn't come and she, if she doesn't run? Yes, they will kill it. Running means to be hunted by an entire village. Negotiating with the elders, who are not disposed to listening to you, is also a huge challenge. Lale has to be very inventive. And I asked the king to come and to drink coffee with me. 
But the first time they say no, they don't want to drink with me. But sometimes I bring them blankets. You know. Sometimes I give them some small gifts, you know, like maybe a torch, you know, uh, you know, light for the night because like they like. So I bring some gifts, and I said, let's sit down and talk. So the first my argument, so I'm going to mention you that I asked the king. I said. Let me be a river, let me be a bush. Because the way they kill, when the mingi happen, they drown in the river. Sometimes they left in the bush, so the wild animal can eat. I said, let me take the curse. Lale's associate, the one on the motorbike, confessed to us that once he had to fight his own brother to stop him from killing his child. He was my elder brother, uh, get mingi boy. I asked him to take to Omuchal, and he said, you also Mingi. He said, oh. for me, yeah, you also Mingi. First, you take yourself to Omuchal. You never take my 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 ah. boy to, to Omuchal. I never give you. Really? My child. Yes, I never give you. And then he also, we are, he ignore me. My, yes, my elder brother, he ignored me also. How? Uh, you, 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 you are not understanding about Mingi, even. You are not understanding about Mingi. If we have a Mingi boy in our house, there is no rain. They, they believe on this. They, there is no rain. There is drought every time. So if, if this Mingi boy, he living in life, even we are not family. Our family is not on good, good way. So we never give Mingi to Omo child. We have to kill him. And then he fight with me. He, he even ignored me for my, my relatives. You are Mingi also. If you want to Mingi alive, you also Mingi. We better kill you. In the end, the boy was saved. The elders finally agreed and allowed the parents not to kill him. But this should give you an idea what tiny proportion of the Minge children can actually get saved from the death sentence and find a new home at the Omo Child Shelter. This boy, together with all the others, is here every morning to start a day by singing the country's anthem. Look how tidy, serious and diligent they are. Everyone knows their place, quite literally, and I'll explain it to you soon. When the flag is up, and they go to the classroom. Look, isn't it just awesome? It's so nice, so neat. Just look at the school. It's not in the capital city or even any major city. It's located in a very rural and remote area. Yet, look at what a fantastic school they've got here. Even in Samara, where I come from, a city with a population of over one million people, we don't have schools like this. And I went to one of the best ones. This is a square for school assemblies with a flagpole. Also, see the numbers. These are the numbers of classes and individual numbers for each student. So every day when they come here, they can feel themselves a part of something bigger. Part of the community, in this school, where they learn things together. Check out how neat and clean everything is here. All the tiling, the flower beds, everything is just perfect and well tended. There's no litter, no cigarette stubs or empty cans. I'm sure many schools in Russia aren't nearly as nice and clean. When the teacher enters the class, the kids stand up to greet them. Right now, something is in progress, but that's what they do usually. And even when the teacher steps out of the class, no one starts running around or shouting. They just sit quietly, waiting. Right now, they're waiting for the next class to begin. If you're curious, check out my reports on Somalia and South Sudan about schools in Africa. This school here, compared to what I've seen before, is something exceptional. Like we're in Europe. It's absolutely terrific. Kids have got uniforms, pens, pencils, copybooks. These flasks are their lunch boxes, and every kid has got one. You won't see anything like that in most other schools. They also have protective masks, unlike many other places. Hello.
Fifteen years ago, when Lale started his Minge Children project, he was a teacher in a village school. He and his wife, as well as all the kids in his care, had to live and study in a small hut. They slept on the floor. To make more money for food, Lale took up a side job as a tourist guide. As the number of kids grew, he knew he had to do something. That's the way I started and I called some of my friends. I, I studied in Germany, in English. I studied Bible. I was a, I was a evangelist, evangelical mm -hmm. uh, studies. And then I went to US. I studied economics degree, so uh, I have some connection in uh, Western world, so I emailed the people I know about this story, and people start helping me slowly, slowly. Mm -hmm. But the first time, they don't believe me, because they say so many people ask money for kids, but they take money for themselves. Yeah. But I say, no, this is a real story, come and see. Mm -hmm. And after they come and see, they all are impressed with the work we're doing here. When Lale managed to secure support from abroad, the Minge problem got on the radar of the local government, since there was no way regular schools would accept the cursed children. Permission was issued to build a separate school for them. Thanks to Lale and his team, it's one of the best schools in the country. I think the school should be very attractive and very clean and very nice, so the students come to school with uh, more uh, interest, you know. Uh -huh. uh, you see in Africa many schools are not uh, clean or not attractive. Yeah. So I have seen that I, you know, my background, I'm a teacher. I have been working for government for four years. That's my first job. I was a teacher. So I see many schools don't have fences. They don't have good, uh, you know, furniture in the classrooms. So I decided to have better school in Africa. So that way the students can come and study in better and in a clean place. The teachers at the Omo Child School are from Kenya. They're much better educated than some of the local staff. And each of them is incredibly proud to be working here. What do you teach? I teach computer. Computer? Yes. Oh, what's it like to teach Ethiopian people, uh, children from tribes computer? It, How do they take it? It's a very beautiful experience. They are willing to learn, especially now that they come from some of the most marginalized areas in Ethiopia. Most of them haven't actually had any experience with computers, so we start with the basics, introduction. They see the physical part of the computers, they touch the machines, and then from there on we try to introduce them to the usage of computers, how to use the computers. From beginner's level, now they're going to the intermediary level. If a school has computers, it means it's a very advanced school. Our school is supported by many technology. We have computers and other things too. And we have camera, so you have security camera over there. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah, so for all purpose, to see if the teachers are in the classroom or what's the, you know, how they manage the class management. And also for other security issues uh, regarding on the uh, other issues. Uh, so we, we, we all installed security cameras and projectors and good uh, teachers. Both the surveillance cameras and a tall fence around the school are here for a reason. This place has to be protected given how strong the superstitions are among the local population about Minge. Uh, so this is uh, each teacher's. Uh, so you're like, this is uh, the class teacher. The whole class, the home teacher like me is a class, the main teacher and other things. And this is a language communication English teacher. Mm -hmm. And here we have uh, English teacher. And here we have computer teacher. And here uh, we have Amharic, Ethiopian national language, mm -hmm. the teacher. And then here is uh, social. This school is on a completely different level than most Ethiopian schools that are made literally out of sticks and clay. See for yourself. This is a village school within the Surma tribe that I visited as well. Probably the most ridiculous thing I ever saw is this is school. This is how the really school in Ethiopia and far very remote area looks like. This is made of wood and actually look at this. There are, there are different types of this wooden sticks, so there are very big holes. 
Although truth be told, having a school in this part of the country is already a huge leap forward, because until a few decades ago, no one had even heard of a formal education in these parts. And now, please let's have a look and inside the classroom. Here it is. Actually, the desks are more like similar to me. So I think we have the same desks in Russia. I think you have the same desks in, in Europe and the US. And this is a public school in a city, one of the best ones in the area. And there is no actually normal window. It is like a big hole here, uh, which is like also uh, helped by some sticks more. So the sticks help a lot. So people are inside. The children here, so we'll now have a chance to see how it looks from the inside. So we come in and so look at the roof, please, guys. So this is something that blows my mind. So that this is kind of a roof, which so the normally the buildings for some repairment, yeah, you know, to repair the car, something like this looks like that. And these wooden sticks are also about to fall. So, and the teaching, the process is also a little different from what we saw before. The kids are writing something in their copybooks, and the fact that they have pens and copybooks means it's an advanced school. And these kids are from privileged families. It's lunchtime. Some have their lunch boxes, others get lunch from school. That includes a piece of flatbread and a glass of tea. You would never guess what is this. So it's like a question for the weakest link, yeah? Try to guess what is this. It's a big rock, square rock, which is just laying on the playground. Uh, this is the toilet. Yes, this is the toilet for the schoolers. So they, here are just four holes, they come and do what they need. Yes, the thing is that there's not, nothing like a wall, there is no even tent, I don't know, there is no nothing like a, there's nothing here, they just come and, and do it. I bet you can now see why the Omo child is one of the top schools in Africa, right? Of course, maintaining high standards is very hard. Despite all the support from the government and donations, money is still a fundamental issue and Lale keeps looking for ways to boost funding. Despite all the challenges Lale and his team face, they are not giving up. They keep doing this because they hope that with time, when these kids get a proper education, they can become successful role models for the local community and change its life and the life of the Menge for the better. Guys, if you like my video and if you like what we're doing, I would really appreciate if you support us on Patreon, on Pioneer or on PayPal. And we try to make even more great films from new dangerous places for you. Thank you. All the links are in the description. Please donate. For the future, they will become a transformative society for their community instead of making a revenge. Because of they are abused, by their families, yes. and now he was collecting them, around 50 something, uh, more than 50 children. And we are going to make them, in, uh, not a revenger students or a revenger children, transformative society by entering into their community. They are working in the future with their communities. Mm -hmm. Now our job is protecting them and uh, working on the development program. One of the development program is this education program. Mm -hmm. So uh, making them to be transformative, to teach their communities regarding to this harmful traditional factor. They are the first in row to teach their communities in the future. Mm -hmm. We are trying on working on that way. Like the elder how, many how many years do you think? To you? me, uh, I cannot estimate it, but let me give you 20 years. Because the elders are now aged and they will go to die. The young generation are learned, educated, and they will change this outlook, this opinion in the progress of their uh, development. The slogan Lale has in his office is full of hope. Minge is no curse but a blessing. <laughs>